in defense as well yeah and they both got good footwork as well which makes a big difference it's not just big men but and just running straight they've got good footwork and they can they both got good distributors as well i know warren gatlin was talking about uh, possibly having george north and jamie roberts in the center because uh, george north was a center in his uh, junior rugby so maybe going forward that could become a bit of a formidable option can you but, imagine uh, facing that i mean the sun would go in every time that their defensive line comes up that would be huge It'd be pretty unbelievable for Wales, but that's the, that's the type of options they've got. And when you see the uh, the wingers and stuff they've got as well, they could uh, they could definitely look to do it. My word, that would be something. Toby Palatow doing well to control the ball at the base of that scrum, teasing the Fijians to come round offside. Duatavo who had the finger pointed at him, but one of two, I think. Very very strong scrum from Wales, and that's what they've got to do. Just get it, just really make Fiji. Put them under pressure, make them make the mistakes, and if we, when Wales do that and they're accurate, they're a very, very good side. Just see the scrum here. Look, Fiji get a bit of a hit on to start, and then Wales just come back when the ball comes in. Just a concerted drive, great work by the front five, and uh, fantastic scrum from Wales. And that's exactly what they, the type of thing they've got to do. Already, that Wales eight putting pressure on in the set piece. Now, can they continue that into the line out? There's Luke Charteris, tallest man in this competition. Ryan Jones. Just ahead of him, all oh, Charteris can't get that ball, and the ball's coming loose to Fiji. And even from this distance, this is where the flying Fijians are so dangerous. We burn the time to weigh up his options. Just been pulled down, just short of halfway. Priestland, good hands from Jamie Roberts out the north. This is beautiful rugby. Scott Williams outside his man. Well, a hat trick on his debut in the World Cup last week. Williams continues that form this week, and that was quite beautiful handling from the Welsh backs to open that gap up for their outside centre. Yeah, fantastic play by the Welsh back line here. There was very little space, and they just worked it really well. Um, a real top class play. Wales haven't played that well so far, but they've just had those two sparks, and they can score tries out of nothing. That's what gives them so much talent. To see Priestland, great hands by Jamie Roberts, George North beating a couple of men, great offload, and that's, that is a fantastic finish by Scott Williams. He's been hugely impressive throughout the build-up to the World Cup and in the World Cup, and he's, put it, he's putting down a real statement saying that he deserves to be in the team. This is a wonderful finish. You see here, George North, and he just absolutely skins Taggy Taggy Bowers. A wonderful try from Scott Williams. Well, only really out here, of course, as replacement for Gavin Henson when he broke his wrist, but my word, is this young man making the most of his opportunity, just 20 years of age? It's fantastic for us to have all these young players doing so well. It's a testament to all the work that's being done in the academies over the last four or five years. They've really put the work in and they're reaping the rewards uh, with some of these talented players that are coming through. They're fantastic. Priestland with no problem at all with the extra jet. We talk about the youngsters and we talk about the nightmare in Nantes four years ago. But these guys were still at school then. George North was 15. Uh, and these, you know, I think Scott Williams was 16. Uh, you just look through it, there are no psychological scars for those guys because they know no fear. No, definitely. I think the way Warren Gatland has changed the squad up over the last uh, six months or so, bringing in these young players, they give such an energy and such a vibrancy and they, 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 not, they're ready for it. They're talented players, they're physically ready. Lee Halfpenny just getting his scrum cap off his eyes so he can see where he's going. The advantage already going to Wales. Of course, Wayne Barnes was on the whistle for that match against South Africa. First game up for the Welsh side. So there should be no surprises behind the whistle this afternoon for them. No, he's a very good official, Wayne Barnes. He gets a lot of stick, but he is, uh, I know, when you play and he's the official, he is a very very good official. He's, pretty, he's uh, top draw. I have to say the welcome he got from the crowd when he was announced just before was, well, I should think only Quade Cooper had a more welcome um, cat call, shall we say. Yeah, I bet he's one of the few people who's not really enjoying this tournament with, uh, in New Zealand with all the stick he's getting, I'm sure. Well, Lee Halfpenny, again, he's, that's a bit of a speciality for him now, ducking under tackles and adjusting his scrum cap as he makes a break, but uh, he's, a, he's a real threat as well. So we've seen what Halfpenny can do, setting up that try for Shane Williams against Samoa, and also that try for Scott Williams against Namibia, his first try. And here they come again, Williams out to burn. Trying to step outside Vuli Vuli. 
Good pick up from Luke Charteris, quite a long way down from six foot nine, six foot ten. Half Penny staying over on this side. The ricochet falling into the hands of Hugh Bennett. Good follow up from the hooker. Again, Charteris in as first receiver. Again, offside against Fiji. And you've got a feeling Wayne Barnes is going to have to start doing something in a minute. It's a repeated infringement from the Pacific Islanders. There's a bit of uh, a silly one there as well. Wales not really not going that, not yet. Fiji were on top in, in defence in some ways because they had the numbers and stuff. Wales haven't sucked them in. But uh, Luke Chartres for Wales has been prominent. He's, his work rate has been superb. He's in, at the start of the World Cup, he's moved ahead of Bradley Davis, who's been a great, uh, excellent player for Wales over the last uh, 18 months or so. And uh, you can see why Luke has, has moved ahead. He's, he's got a huge work rate. He gets loads. He gets you loads of racks, loads of tackles. He's carry, offering himself to carry all the time, and um, he's doing a great job in the second row. And there's good competition in that area as well. Especially with Alan Wynne Jones, who's been in superb form through these first three games, been given the chance to rest on the bench today. But it really is a position of strength at the moment for one. Yeah, I think when you're looking through the, the Welsh team, you, it's really encouraging because I was looking at that uh, 22, 24, if you include Shane Williams and James Hook, and you think if anyone drops out of the side. And, and there's an injury, they've got people who can come in and replace them. First land, well, he had a cipher from the conversion of that try from Scott Williams and no problems with the penalty as Wolverton opts for the extra three points just to turn the screw a little bit in the Fijian psyche. That's really important as well, just to keep Fiji out of the game, not to give him a sniff, and uh, Wills are uh, pretty much spot on so far. into the second quarter of this game and it's George North powering his way out from the 22. Phillips, of course, another man who's going to be playing in the top 14 next, well, I'll say next season, this season, when he gets back. There's Bayon, Perissoni scooting his way around the outside. The ricochet not working for him. Well, Kerasoni, you might notice the family resemblance. He's Kamali Ratabu's brother. Yeah, this is fantastic. That's why watching Fiji is, is so good because they, they players are always capable of beating someone one on one and getting through the break. It didn't quite work out for him there, but that was a great break by uh, Kerasoni. Had a trial with the Hertfordshire club. About to start his second season with Perigur and Proder. Good take from Warburton. Just biding his time. Not working on that occasion. That's the sort of things that will uh, annoy the coaches for Wales. They're not uh, those little bits of inaccuracy. That's the things that they want to get right. So it's not everything that they do. The opposition have got to work really hard to turn them over or to get get, get the ball back. And Wales have been guilt, a little bit guilty of just giving the ball away a little bit too easily. Okay, let's go. Warburton always really, I suppose, the captain elect, captain the under 20s in the inaugural NLB Junior World Championships Crouch. back in 2008. Of course, that was on home Touch. soil. Pulse. And now, as the guys have said, has displaced Martin Williams from this squad. And taken over the captain's armband, but right now he's in defensive mode as Makindingo. He's threatening, but losing the ball in the contact. Yeah, it's quite difficult conditions. There's a little bit of drizzle there during the warmth and stuff. The pitch looks a little bit greasy. Handling can be a little bit difficult at the times when you get into that contact area. You see uh, Wales putting Fiji under pressure in the scrum, get, turning around. Great pickup by Talai and a brilliant offload as well to uh, Matt and Dingo, but uh, he couldn't quite keep the ball. Fiji in a good position here, so they'd be disappointed with that. There's two of his fellow club back rowers are in this tournament as well. Matt and Dingo. Drago for France and Gugotse for Georgia. Move back to Jamie Roberts. But man and ball, or men and ball on that occasion, and Roberts doing very well to struggle his way out of the 22. Let's just see the players just struggling with their hold on the ball, and as you say, slightly greasy ball, difficult to play with. Roberts show and go. Well, to hang on to it as he hits the deck. Let's go, touch your line. Let's go. 
hands off. Kingston looking inside for the heavy duty runners, being the shape of Adam Jones. Good half of the Hair Bear Bunch. Gets the ball back and Reese Priestland sends it straight down Michael Tanner Packenbaugh's throat. And Sony threads it through. Well, there's a sign, I suppose, of the more pragmatic Fijian approach, whereas before, with their sevens background, you would expect them to try and utilise the open spaces. Yeah, I think they're trying to sort of get a blend. It's it must be a difficult team to coach Fiji because they've got so much play and they want to play all the time in that seven style. But uh, I think they've got that Australian influence with Michael Foley and, um, and, and Mam as well, the forwards coach. So they've got that Australian influence. They're trying to get a balance between the game. Moses Rowley's working there as well with, uh, with Fiji. So they've got that Fijian influence. So it's, uh, I'm sure they, they get it, the balance just about right. Big collision between North and Bully Bully, but the Fijian right wing are doing well to set the ball back. Stolen ball, says the referee, but in fact it's Nakarawa. He's done very well to make sure the Fijians still have possession. A little dink over the top from Nicky Little. Burn picks up the ball and his huge numbers out to the right. Options right and left for Scott Williams. Phillips continues it right. Priestland. Oh, I just thought Halfpenny had changed his weight there. He's looking for the scissors. But still they go. Adam Jones. Didn't fancy the sidestep. Phillips keeps it moving. Wales going through the phases now. Slightly high hug on Wolverton, but the ball's still there for his team. Roberts throws it out to George North. And it's not surprising when you can see a Fijian object hurling at you at such a rate of knots like Albert Vuli Vuli. Well, you're going to get your pass away quickly, aren't you? Yeah, Jamie Roberts has, uh, has done a couple of quick hands today and uh, he almost almost pulled that one off as well. He's been uh, fantastic for this day. He's been looking really strong and uh, Wales just got to settle down. And they're into the game now. They really dominate and they just need that next score to really ram home that advantage that they've got. Second row, I've got to stop. Nicky Little, nephew of the All Black centre, Walter Little. Played in so many clubs. Supporters in the UK will know him in Sale Colours, in Saracens Colours, in Bath and latterly in Bristol. He was actually born in Takarua in New Zealand. And played locally for Waikato. Although I'm told he play, played his first rugby at primary school in Western Australia. So could have played for anybody really. Yeah, he's played, he played in uh, Pont de Pree as well. I played Did he? Him, yeah, he played with him there as well. So he, Came he's across a, the bridge. He's a, yeah. <laughs> good decision. Uh, he's a, he's a, he's a lovely fast. guy as well. Really good, uh, good guy and a, a good, good player. He's been a fantastic Just server for Pete as well. Time. As I mentioned, playing his last games. Tells me he's been looking on eBay for new knees and new Achilles but can't find them. So that said, he's going to have to retire at the end of this tournament. My little one. Is Vittori Votava admits to being blind as a bat without his glasses, which really is teammates. You don't want to hear from your scrum half, do you? No, it's not a good, uh, not a good thing to know, is it? Certainly with the rain coming down as it is now. Yeah, it must be quite difficult out there today for him. Tony Talai tries to pick and drive from the base, but skates to a halt and has to allow his scrum half to feed on to the props Koto losing the ball in the contact and maybe Fanatau quick to pick up the scrap and it goes to the skipper Robert is struggling to keep it his side but he does and Priestman can't pick up that bar of soap and Gabi Levin Balavo feeds on to Nasinga Suddenly, Fiji thinking about an attack from inside their own half. Here it comes, Albert Bully Bully. Wales know all about him. He scored the try back at the Millennium Stadium in the autumn. And forcing the penalty from Wolverton. 
Some great play by Gethin Jenkins there to force a turnover. It's been a real feature uh, in the Namibia game as well since he's come back. Really work getting getting in, stuck in in those rucks and uh, turning some ball over. It's a real weapon to have in your team when a uh, when, when your front row forwards are contributing to the the, the defensive effort like that.